Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Nishit Kumar and with me is Prashant Kumar Sinha with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asserts India Vietnam comprehensive strategic partnership can contribute to promote regional stability, prosperity and development. Center reviews steps taken by state governments to check spread of COVID-19 in hill stations and tourist locations. Over 37 crore 21 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. National COVID-19 recovery rate stands at 97.20%. 97 lakh households get tap water supply in 61 Japanese encephalitis affected districts of five states. Three terrorists killed in encounter in Anantnag district of Jammu and Kashmir. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jaishankar holds talks with Georgia counterpart David Jalkaliani, says connectivity is a key to reliability and resilience in a globalized world. In Wimbledon tennis, Ashley Barty faces Carolina Pliskova in women's singles final. In women's cricket, India to take on hosts England in the second T20 match at Hove tomorrow. And in Euro Cup football, Italy lock horns with England in the summit clash in London tomorrow. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also to help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said India-Vietnam Comprehensive Strategic Partnership can contribute to promote regional stability, prosperity and development. Mr. Modi said both countries share a similar vision of an open, inclusive, peaceful and rules-based Indian Ocean region. Prime Minister Modi held a phone call with his Vietnamese counterpart Pham Minh Chin today and congratulated him on his appointment as the Prime Minister of Vietnam. During the conversation, Mr. Modi expressed confidence that comprehensive strategic partnership between the two countries will continue to become stronger under the able guidance of Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin. Both Prime Ministers also reviewed the state of bilateral relations and shared their views on different areas of cooperation. Prime Minister Modi thanked Prime Minister Chin for the valuable support provided by the government and people of Vietnam during the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in India. The leaders agreed that both countries should continue consultations and cooperation to support each other's continuing efforts against the pandemic. Prime Minister Modi also invited Prime Minister Chin to undertake an official visit to India at an early suitable date. Union Home Secretary Ajay Kumar Bhalla today chaired a meeting to review the steps taken by the state governments for checking the spread of COVID-19 in hill stations and tourist locations. During the meeting in New Delhi, the overall management of COVID-19 situation and the vaccination status in the states of Goa, Himachal Pradesh, Kerala, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Uttarakhand and West Bengal were discussed. The Union Home Secretary sounded a note of caution in view of media reports showing blatant disregard of COVID-appropriate behavior in hill stations and other tourist locations. He emphasized that the second wave of COVID was not yet over and the state should ensure strict adherence to the protocols prescribed in respect of wearing of masks, social distancing and other safe behavior. It was observed that the decline of the second wave is at variable stages in the different states and union territories in the country. It was noted that while the overall case positivity rate may be declining, the case positivity rate in certain districts of Rajasthan, Kerala, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh is over 10%, which is a cause for concern. States were also asked to follow the five-fold strategy of test, track, treat, vaccinate and COVID-appropriate behavior. The meeting was attended by Niti Aayog member Dr. V.K. Paul, Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan, Director General, Indian Council of Medical Research and Chief Secretaries, Directors General of Police and Principal Secretaries Health of eight states.
India's cumulative COVID vaccination coverage has exceeded the 37 crore 57 lakh mark. As per the 7 p.m. provisional report today, the cumulative figure stands at 37 crore 57 lakh 10,173. The Union Health Ministry in a statement said that more than 34 lakh vaccine doses have been administered today. The national recovery rate stands at 97.20%. More than 45,000 patients recovered during the past 24 hours. Till now, over 2 crore 99 lakh people have recovered from the COVID-19 infection. India reported over 42,000 new cases in the past 24 hours. 1,206 people have lost their lives due to COVID-19 in the previous 24 hours. With this, the death toll due to the pandemic has reached the 4,7145. The union, the union government today said that more than 38 crore 54 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories. As part of the nationwide vaccination drive, the union government has been supporting the states and union territories by providing them COVID vaccines free of cost. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has stressed on the need for behavioral change, saying that COVID-appropriate behavior must be strictly followed even after vaccination. He also called for removing vaccine hesitancy among sections of people and stressed the need for concerted efforts to counter fake news and dispel myths on issues relating to COVID-19. Mr. Naidu was speaking after releasing the book Kota Katalu, an, an anthology of 80 short stories on COVID-19 in Telugu by eminent authors from across the world. A total of 76 new cases of coronavirus infection were reported in the national capital during the last 24 hours. Delhi government said during the same period, 81 people recovered and one death was reported in the city. In the last 24 hours, over 1,31,000 beneficiaries were inoculated for COVID-19 in Delhi. With this, over 88,17,000 beneficiaries have been vaccinated so far. Kerala continues to report surge in COVID cases as 14,087 new cases were confirmed today. Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan has informed that even when COVID cases continue to surge, extending the lockdown indefinitely will not be a feasible solution. He appealed to the public not to misuse the relaxations given by the government. He added that the right step at this moment is to ensure vaccination to the maximum number of people to prevent a rapid spread. The pandemic has enhanced the role of NGOs in society. They have helped the government in serving people at the time of need. Junoon is one such NGO which is based in Mumbai and teaches underprivileged children. Let's hear more in this report. During the pandemic, the NGO helped these children to keep up with the education. Speaking to All India Radio News, Himnati Sain, founder of Junoon, said the underprivileged children were taught at the Skywalk during the lockdown as most of them do not have access to online education. We identify students who are ready to go to school. Even after going to school, we keep our tuition on so that we can help them with their studies. We also provide them with daily meals and uh, we have a lot of extracurricular activities so that the children get out of the environment. Himnati also informed that after training children for two years, they are sent for formal education at school. She added that various festivals, picnics are also organized for children to help them lead a normal life. Diksha Saxena for AIR News, Delhi. The New Services Division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone-in program Corona Jagrupta series will bring you a special discussion on COVID-19 tonight. Dr. Anupam Prakash, Professor of Medicine at the Lady Harding Medical College, will participate in the live discussion. This can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. Listeners can ask questions to the expert on toll-free number 1-800-115767 and on telephone number 011-2331-4444. You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asserts India-Vietnam comprehensive strategic partnership can contribute to promote regional stability, prosperity and development. Center reviews steps taken by state governments to check spread of COVID-19 in hill stations and tourist locations. Over 37 crore 57 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. National COVID-19 recovery rate stands at 97.20%. 97 lakh households get tap water supply in 61 Japanese encephalitis-affected districts of five states. 
three terrorists killed in encounter in Anantnag district of Jammu and Kashmir. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jai Shankar holds bilateral talks with Georgia counterpart David Zalkilani, says connectivity is a key to reliability and resilience in a globalized world. In Wimbledon tennis, top seed Ashley Barty clinches women's singles title. In women's cricket, India to take on hosts England in the second T20 match at Hove tomorrow. And in EuroCup football, Italy lock horns with England in the summit clash in London tomorrow. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. The centre is disseminating awareness of national helpline numbers for the benefit of citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. The helpline number of the Health and Family Welfare Ministry is 1075. The child helpline number is 1098. For senior citizens of Delhi, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, the helpline number is 14567. The helpline number of National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimhant, for psychological support is 08046110007. Ayush COVID-19 counselling helpline number is 14443. And MyGov WhatsApp help desk number is 9013151515. <laughs> Welcome back to the evening news. Jal Jeevan Mission has provided tap water supply to more than 97 lakh households in 61 Japanese encephalitis, acute encephalitis syndrome affected districts of five states. The mission has significantly strengthened the preventive measures to reduce spread of Japanese encephalitis by providing clean tap water supply to economically poor households in the affected districts of Assam, Bihar, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. The Jal Shakti Ministry said the tap water has been supplied to these priority districts in a short span of 22 months. On 15th August 2019, when Jal Jeevan Mission was announced, only 8 lakh households in 61 Japanese encephalitis affected districts across five states had tap water supply. More than 462 crore rupees have been allocated to these states as Japanese encephalitis acute encephalitis syndrome component for 2021-22. Kerala Health Minister Veena George has informed that the 17 samples sent to the National Institute of Virology in Alapura, which was suspected of Zika infection, have been tested negative. 13 hospital staff from a private hospital were also found to be infected yesterday. The minister said 14 patients are currently undergoing treatment for Zika virus infection in the state. In Jammu and Kashmir, three terrorists were gunned down by a joint team of security forces in an encounter at Kwarigam village in Ranipura area of Anantanag district this afternoon. The identity of the slain terrorists is being ascertained. Police said one of the slain terrorists has been identified as Arif Hajam. He was associated with the band terror outfit lashkar e toiba L.E.T. and was involved in the killing of Army Havaldar Mansur Beg of the 162 Territorial Army on the 6th of June in 2019 while he was on leave. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha today inaugurated multiple projects of Srinagar Smart City including variable message displays, VMDs, installed across the city, besides dedicating the new surface car parking at Residency Road in Srinagar to the public. The move is aimed to transform the cities of Jammu and Kashmir and in making them more vibrant, citizen-friendly and modern in nature. The Lieutenant Governor also launched the My Srinagar mobile app, which will be a one-stop solution catering to needs of citizens and tourists in Srinagar. The BJP has criticized the Ashok Gehlot led Rajasthan government for failing to control the rising crime cases in the state. Addressing media in New Delhi, BJP spokesperson Rajavardhan Rathor said, as per the crime report of 2019 20, Rajasthan has topped the list in the country in the crime graph. In 2019 2020, the crime in the state of Rajasthan is unfortunately number one. 
महिलाओं के ऊपर क्राइम पर नंबर वन स्थान पर है दलितों के ऊपर जो अत्याचार हो रहा है क्राइम हो रहे हैं उसमें नंबर टू से नंबर वन के स्थान पर जा रहा है राजस्थान की सरकार का एक ही लक्ष्य है और उस लक्ष्य के कारण ये सब हो रहा है सत्ता में बने रहना Former Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Veerbhadra Singh was cremated with full state honours at his native place Rampur Bushahar in Shimla district this afternoon. Chief Minister Jairam Thakur, several leaders from different political parties and thousands of people from different walks of life paid rich tributes to veteran Congress leader. The 87-year-old breathed his last after a prolonged illness at a hospital in Shimla on Thursday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed grief over the passing away of Kashi Annapurna Temple Mahant Rameshwar Puri. In a tweet, the Prime Minister said his passing away is an irreparable loss to the society. In Bihar, the flood has wreaked havoc in Darbhanga, Samastipur, West Champaran and Muzaffarpur districts. Flood waters are rapidly engulfing fresh areas of these districts. The flood situation turned grim in Darbhanga following breach of embankment at four places. People from low-lying areas are being shifted to safer places. Deputy Chief Minister Renu Devi said 603 boats have been pressed into service to evacuate marooned people. In all, 28 people lost their lives due to drowning in flood-affected areas of the state during the past 24 hours. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in the Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio on the 25th of this month. This will be the 79th episode of the monthly radio program. The Prime Minister has invited people to share their ideas on topics he should address on the coming episode of the program. People can share their views in the Namo app or MyGov open forum. They can also dial toll-free number 18001178000 and record their message for the Prime Minister in either Hindi or English. Phone lines will remain open till the 22nd of this month. India has expanded its footprint of mango exports to newer countries this season despite logistical challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic. In a major initiative which would boost mango export potential from the eastern region especially to Middle East countries, a consignment of geographical identification certified Fazil mango variety sourced from Malda district of West Bengal was exported today to Bahrain. The shipment to Bahrain comes a few days after Agricultural and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority organized a mango promotion program at Doha in Qatar. Khadi and Village Industries Commission, KVIC, has recently secured trademark registrations in three countries, Bhutan, UAE and Mexico, which is a big stride towards protecting the identity of brand Khadi globally. Apart from these countries, KVIC's trademark applications are pending in 40 countries across the world that include the USA, Qatar, Sri Lanka, Japan, Italy, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Brazil and others. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Dunya Rang Birangi Khatye Michi Rasili Samacharun Ka Satrangi Khazana Akashwani Par Khabre Hongi Hatkar Janengi Kuch Alag Hasengi Khulkar Karengi Sajag Sunna Na Bhoolay सोमवार और मंगलवार आज सवेरे तथा शनिवार और रविवार कार्यक्रम परिक्रमा में वेलकम बैक External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar today held bilateral talks with Vice Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Georgia David Zalkaliani The External Affairs Minister is on a two-day visit to Georgia. This is the first visit of an Indian External Affairs Minister to independent Georgia. In a joint statement after the talks, Dr. Jayashankar said the discussions covered trade and economic cooperation, tourism, connectivity, education and culture. We have very comprehensively discussed bilateral cooperation. I think there is a lot that we can be satisfied about. The, there's been significant Indian investment here. There are 8,000 students who study in Georgia, Indian students. There are more than 50,000 Indian tourists who come here. I was very impressed to learn, to see actually that some of our movies, uh, well-known movies have been shot in Georgia. The minister said they also discussed connectivity as it is a key to reliability and resilience in a globalized world. Dr. Jayashankar said there are big Indian investments in projects in Georgia including in the hydro sector, hydroelectricity sector and the steel sector. The external affairs minister handed over the holy relics of the 17th century Georgian queen Saint Ketavon to the government and the people of Georgia. 
speaking at the relic handling ceremony. Dr. S. Jayashankar said the return of the holy relic of Queen St. Ketavan from India to Georgia is a testimony of warm and friendly relations between the two countries. The holy relics were preserved at the St. Augustine Church in Goa since the 17th century. Her relics were taken to India by two devoted Augustinian monks who witnessed the last years of her life. One part of the holy relics still remain in India as a reminder of the shared past of India and Georgia. Dr. Jayashankar said, given the immense spiritual value that this relic holds for the people of Georgia, India had kept this sacred heritage as its own. He particularly thanked the people of Goa, who have been reverential custodians of this holy treasure. In view of our very close friendship and understanding the importance of faith, Prime Minister Modi decided to gift one part of the Holy Relic to the Georgian people. And it was my honor, my privilege to personally carry it. As Tokyo Olympics are just a few days ago, uh, uh, a few days away, athletes are busy with the final stages of their preparations. Today in the Olympic series of All India News, we talk about national hockey player Neha Goyal. Born on 15th November 1996 at Sonipat, Haryana, Neha Goel is a member of the country's women's hockey team. Neha is prepared to show her magic in the hockey at Tokyo. Mid-fire, Neha became a part of the senior team in 2014 and participated in the FIH Championship in Glasgow. Neha was a part of 2018 World Cup, Asian Games and Commonwealth Games. In the Monkey Bath program, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while referring to Neha, said that many people get inspiration from her life because she persisted even in the absence of resources. Neha said that this is her first Olympics and she is very excited for the Games. My aim was to play in the Olympics after the Asian Games. So now it's going to be full. My aim is to play in the Asian Games. And I'm very excited for it because it's my first Neha, along with the entire hockey team, is ready to show her strength in the Tokyo Olympics and the country's best wishes are with her. Diksha Saxena, Sports Desk. Listeners from all across the country are participating in the Olympic quiz of AIR News. Many listeners have emailed us the correct answer to yesterday's question. SN Singh of Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh has sent the correct answer. He is the winner of our yesterday's quiz. Many congratulations to SN Singh from the entire team of All India Radio News. Speaking to AIR News, SN Singh expressed his happiness on winning the Olympic quiz. Today's Olympic quiz is very happy for me. This is why I give the Akashwani team to the Akashwani team. कि उन्होंने इस तरह का बहुत अच्छा पहल किया है मैं ओलंपिक में भाग लेने वाले सभी भारतीय खिलाड़ियों को भी धन्यवाद देता हूं और ईश्वर से प्रार्थना करता हूं कि गोल्ड मेडल जीते हम सभी भारतीयों का शुभ कामना है कि वो भारत के तिरंगे को इतना ऊंचा करें कि कोई भी देश देखे तो उसको लगे कि भारत का तिरंगा सबसे ऊंचा है to participate in the olympic quiz tune in to our sports scan program every day at 7:20 pm in the run-up to the Tokyo Olympics, the New Services Division of All India Radio in its Sports Scan program is broadcasting every day Olympics Quiz with AIR News. Olympics Quiz, Akashwani Samachar ke saath in Hindi. Every day, a question related to Olympics will be asked at the beginning and closing of the program. To participate in this program, listeners can send the replies by email on airsportscan at gmail.com. The first correct answer received through email will be adjudged the winner of the quiz. The name of the winner will be announced in SportsScan program the next day. It will also be flashed on AIR Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The Sports Authority of India will provide India team jersey to the winner. So tune in to the SportsScan program every day at 7.20 p.m. on FM Gold and on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. In Wimbledon tennis tournament, Australian top seed Ashley Barty has clinched the women's singles title, defeating eight seed Carolina Pliskova of Czech Republic. Barty won the first set 6-3, but Pliskova fought back to win the second set 7-6-4-7 to level the contest one set each. Barty made a strong comeback and won the third set 6-3 to clinch the title. 
In the men's singles defending champion, Novak Djokovic has set up the summit clash with Italy's Matteo Berrettini. The match will be held tomorrow. And in men's doubles, Croatian pair and first seed Nikola Mektik and Mete Pevic will play against Spanish-Argentine team of Marcel Granollers and Horacio Zabalas in the finals tonight. And in women's doubles, unseeded Veronika Kudermetova and Elena Vesnina will meet third seed Elise Mertens of Belgium and Shea Suvey of Taiwan in the title clash tonight. And in women's cricket, India will take on host England in the second T20 of the three-match series at Hove tomorrow. The hosts beat India in the first T20 match by 18 runs through Duckworth Lewis method in a rain hit match yesterday. The third in the final T20 match of the series will be played at Chelmsford on the 14th of this month. In Euro Cup football tournament, England will take on Italy in the summit clash at Wembley Stadium in London tomorrow. England reached their first final in 55 years as captain Harry Kane settled a tense semi-final against Denmark with the extra time strike that sealed a 2-1 win at the Wembley. Italy, on the other hand, defeated Spain on penalties in the first semi-final to reach the finals. In Copa America football, Argentina will take on arch-rivals Brazil in the final at Rio de Janeiro tomorrow. The match will see superstars of world football Lionel Messi and Neymar fight against each other. With the clash, Lionel Messi has the chance to win his first major international tournament. Monsoon showers intensify across various districts in Kerala. The India Meteorological Department has issued warning to fishermen not to venture into the sea in Kerala, Karnataka and Lakshadweep coast till the 14th of this month. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi is likely to experience generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thundershaft. Temperature will hover between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius. In Mumbai, the minimum temperature will be 24 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be around 31 degrees. Chennai, the temperature will vary between 26 and 35 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will observe a minimum temperature of 28 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 35 degrees. Srinagar will experience partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Jammu will have thunderstorm with rain. Leh is expected to have mainly clear sky, minimum, and the maximum temperature will be between 14 and 30 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will have mainly clear sky. Temperature will hover between 16 and 40 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will experience thunderstorms. The minimum temperature will be 21 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 28 degrees in Dehradun, the minimum temperature will be 21 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 30 degrees. In Guwahati, the minimum temperature will be around 27 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be 36 degrees. Imphal will observe a minimum temperature of 22 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 31 degrees. In Sri Long, temperature will hover between 19 and 27 degrees Celsius. In Aizawl, the minimum temperature will be 20 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 28 degrees. In Kohima, the minimum and the maximum temperature will be between 19 and 28 degrees Celsius. In Itanagar, temperature will hover between 26 and 35 degrees Celsius. Gangtok will experience partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. Agartala will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In Port Blair, temperature will vary between 23 and 28 degrees Celsius. In Shimla, the temperature will vary between 18 and 27 degrees Celsius. Ranchi will observe a minimum temperature of 23 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 30 degrees. And Bengaluru will experience generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asserts India-Vietnam Comprehensive Strategic Partnership can contribute to promote regional stability, prosperity and development. Centre reviews steps taken by the state governments to check spread of COVID-19 in health stations and tourist locations. Over 37 crore 57 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. National COVID-19 recovery rate stands at 97.20%. 97 lakh households get tap water supply in 61 Japanese encephalitis affected districts of five states. Three terrorists killed in encounter in Anantnag district of Jammu and Kashmir. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar holds bilateral talks with Georgia counterpart David Zalkaliani, says connectivity is a key to reliability and resilience in a globalized world. In Wimbledon tennis, top seed Ashley Barty clinches women's singles title. In women's cricket, India to take on hosts England in the second T20 match at Hove tomorrow. And in Eurocup football, Italy lock horns with England in the summit clash in London tomorrow. 
For details of these stories and more, log on to our website, newsonair.com and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.